writes a trashy magazine at the checkout line of a grocery store, or an investigative expose in the New York Times, the effects of mental illness seem to dominate the news headlines. Britney Spears is back from rehab. Another horrific school shooting results in the deaths of innocent students, jail overcrowding, celebrity suicides. All of these issues are routinely associated with mental illness, but how big is this problem, and can it be solved? Let's break down the facts about mental illness. First of all, what is mental illness? There are 297 recognized mental disorders, so we all know the big ones, anxiety, depression, schizophrenia, bipolar, but have you heard of any of these? In fact, there are an estimated 43.8 million adults and 8.4 million teens that experience mental illness each year. That's equal to the combined population of Texas, New York, and New Jersey. And chances are, you have a close family member or friend who suffers from one of these conditions. But that begs the question, with such a wide spectrum of symptoms, what exactly are the treatment options? Let's take a look at the history of mental illness treatment. If you were mentally ill between the late 1400s and late 1600s, it meant that you were either a witch, possessed by the devil, or being punished by God. Seriously, these are the only three diagnoses. Which means that your course of treatment was either being burned at the stake, an exorcism, or prayer. Eventually, these treatment plans were abandoned, presumably because they weren't too effective. But by the early 1700s, the mentally ill were being hospitalized. And by the 1800s, a new type of treatment center was born, the insane asylum. In these institutions, the mentally ill were often abused and subjects of experimentation by doctors looking for more effective treatment methods. Patients became human test subjects for everything from insulin to lobotomies. That's a brain surgery where doctors access the brain with an ice pick through the eye socket to cut certain nerves to cure the mental illness. About 50,000 lobotomies were performed in the United States, leaving many patients dead or permanently disabled. By the late 1950s, lobotomies were discontinued and replaced by new and more effective medications. And in the 1960s, President Kennedy, whose mentally ill sister underwent an unsuccessful lobotomy, introduced a bill known as the Community Mental Health Care Act, which effectively shut down the insane asylums. So that brings us to the modern age of mental health treatment. The following treatment options are available for patients today. Psychotherapy, medications, and alternate treatments such as electroshock, vitamins, and exercise. These treatment options, under a doctor's supervision, can be safe, effective, and are readily available. And it can also lead to a cure. So why are only one in three Americans suffering from a mental illness receiving treatment today? Here's why, stigma. We have a lot of mental health problems. History will tell us that a determined killer will kill, no matter what we do. You used to be able to bring him into a mental institution, and hopefully he gets help or whatever, but he's off the streets. Popular opinion that mentally ill citizens tend to be violent, erratic, disruptive, addicts, or prone to criminal activity contributes to a stigma that has marginalized this group and prevented the majority from seeking access to widely available resources. More than 24 million patients suffering from mental illness go without treatment. Perceived stigma is a significant barrier for patients seeking mental health care. Of course, there are other reasons patients don't seek treatment. There's lack of knowledge about mental health care, inability to recognize symptoms in oneself, and inability to identify healthcare resources for mental health symptoms. But stigma is the major reason. But let's separate public perception from facts. Perception, the mentally ill are violent. Fact, according to a government report, only three to five percent of violent acts can be attributed to individuals with a serious mental illness. In fact, people with severe mental illnesses are over 10 times more likely to be victims of violent crime than the general population. Perception, the mentally ill end up homeless or as drug addicts. Fact, only one in four homeless adults living in shelters have a serious mental illness, and only one in four mentally ill adults also suffer from drug or alcohol addiction. So what can we do to eradicate this mental illness stigma in America? Awareness raising, such as World Health Day on October 10th. Literacy programs, educate the public, that's the point of this PSA. Protest, students have been at the forefront of shining a light on mental health after school shootings. Advocacy, Creating laws to protect the mentally ill from things like hiring discrimination and police profiling. Early intervention, a treatment plan, medication or therapy, or a combination of both can either lead to a cure or long-term management of mental illness. This will allow patients to live happy, healthy, and productive lives. And these awareness campaigns and advocacy programs can help eliminate the stigma and encourage the mentally ill to seek treatment. For those of you who know someone or struggle with some sort of mental illness, here are some resources available to help you. Or simply use Google. Just get help. I've been on a low, I've been taking my time.